Well, that game was not very good, but we're here to break down exactly what happened to Illinois as they travel to play Ohio State, getting the tough loss to lonely little Ohio State, 72-60. to 60. Illinois just didn't, just looked out of sorts. They looked tired. They, you know, there was no movement on offense at times. You know, some of it's the same old song, different dance, but we're going to talk, break down a little bit about what happened. In this very quick post game, we are a little bit of ways removed from the game, allowed time to think and reflect and, you know, exactly what had taken place during this game. Uh, but Illinois gets that tough loss uh, to Ohio State, 72 to 60. Um, hit the like button, subscribe button on YouTube, follow Ray on Apple and iTunes, helps the podcast a long way. Follow at Coach underscore Steve72 on Twitter and at Coach Steve Show on Twitter, trying to grow that Twitter account as well. So Illinois travels to Ohio State. Ohio State was, I believe, on a nine-game losing streak. And Ohio State's always – this is not one of the best Ohio State teams we have ever seen. They are heavily reliant on freshmen, uh, kind of like Illinois. But it's not one of the – this Ohio State team is not – was not – the best and that's what makes this loss even worse but also people have to realize that watching Ohio State play they they play tough they play tough so I think that's one of the first things we need to discuss is are we incredibly shocked that they lost to Ohio State a little bit only because Ohio State was on this losing streak but some of the games were close that they have lost to some they played tough and that's one thing we we have to remember is who did they lose to? How did they lose to them? Um, it's not always the score. It's how you lose, and that's why we always need to be careful in how we speak and observe. We always have to watch the game. Ohio State has had some good wins this year, um, so it's just been an inconsistent team. They are a young team as well, just like Illinois. Um, they've beaten Texas Tech, who was ranked at the time. Uh, they've beaten Rutgers. They lost North Carolina in a tough game. They've beaten Northwestern. Um, they lost to a very close game to Purdue, 71-69. to 69. Um, They beat Iowa, 93-77. Um, to 77. They played Illinois tough the first time around when Illinois only won 69-60, to 60, and that's what started this losing streak. And then, of course, the end of the losing streak was against Illinois. You know, go figure on that one. But they played close against Northwestern. Um, they played tough against Penn State, who Illinois, that's been Achilles heel for them. They played close game versus Wisconsin. So this this team is tough. And one thing I noticed with Ohio State is they were on this losing streak. They played like they had nothing to lose, which they did not. After this win, they are now 12 and 17 and now four and fourteen in the Big Ten, which Illinois is now 19 and 10 overall and 10 and 8 in the Big Ten, three games back. Out of first, Purdue looks like they're going to finish up and claim the Big Ten title this year for regular season. Uh, the double buy for Illinois is completely gone. I think it was gone before this game even started, but it is now fully gone. Illinois, I don't know if I want to say they look tired. I did. They, they kind of look tired, but one thing that started to happen was they – allowed Ohio State to keep driving to the paint. They were not playing good help side defense. They would trail the, the guys coming off screens, which, you know, it depends on who you're playing. Sometimes you want to go under the screen. Sometimes you want to trail. But when you trail a guy off the screen, the guy that's guarding the screener needs to sag off and make sure that nothing gets downhill. I know Illinois at times would not even have anybody there to stop the guy getting downhill. A big stat and hopefully I'm reading the right one because it's it's absolutely nuts, is that Ohio State outscored Illinois 46 to 28 in the paint. 46 to 28. That's not good. Illinois, same song, same song, different dance, same shit, different day. Illinois falls in love with shooting threes. Illinois falls in love with, you know, at times standing there watching to see if Mayor or Shannon Carter Jr. are going to bail somebody out. They like to stand there and watch. At the beginning of the game, there was movement. They ran a lot of chin cut stuff. They There was guys coming off that back screen from the guy at the free throw line 
that they would miss and they turned the ball over. They kept selling for these dumb jump shots. They kept selling for the threes. And I know, oh, oh Steve, like we we will brag, or we'll, we'll jump on board when they're hitting all these threes and it becomes a good thing. Sure, because they're making them, but it's one thing to drive kick out. It's another thing to set a screen and they go into the screen and he's wide open. It's another thing to get a fast break. They take away every lane except this guy's a three. That's when Illinois is good when they do those things. It's another to stand there and watch Mayor dribble, 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 step back, boom. He can hit those absolutely, but it's a complete other thing when that's what you're settling for. At the beginning of the game, there was a lot of movement, I thought. But then as the game went on, we got into the second half. They weren't doing as much movement and not as much of the chin cut stuff, um, not as much pick and roll. They were turning the ball over. They were, you know, now they started to come back in the game because it's Ohio State. They stopped hitting their shots. They, Ohio State started to settle for jump shots, but when they started getting back into the paint, which I said 46 to 28 scoring is embarrassing uh, for Illinois because Illinois is actually very good at getting downhill to the paint. They're very good in fast break transition, and they did not do that. Um, percentage wise, Ohio State shot 53.6% from the field. Illinois shot 36. Um, Illinois was six of 29 from three, 20.7%. That is embarrassing. They just kept selling for the threes. Um, Ohio State was uh three of 14, 21%. A lot of those threes for them came in the second half. Free throw, Illinois is 10 of 14, nine to for 10 for Ohio State. Rebounds, Ohio State out rebounded 40 to 28, 32 defensive rebounds. Uh, had more assists in Illinois, 10 to 8, had more steals. And Illinois did not turn the ball over as much, but they did not capitalize on much of the turnovers. That's the biggest stat is the points in the paint and the shooting percentage. Illinois just was not hitting shots. They were missing bunnies. Uh, they just kept selling for the damn threes when you – you know, Illinois took 61 shots, 29 of them were threes. Ohio State took 56 shots, and 14 of them were threes, if that tells you anything for Illinois. Because Illinois likes, again, like I said, if you actually watch them and things aren't going well, they're turning the ball over, they're not getting some of their shots, they will start to stand there. They will stand there and not move. Watch them. They run a thing. I don't know if it's exactly chin cut stuff. Chin cut stuff that I learned at a school, and it's, it could be a little bit different, is you have a guy in the middle, and then you have different spots where they're passing, dribble handoff, and they swing the ball around, they come off this back cut, and then they come do a pick and roll, and they can do all those different things. So it's called a chin cut because it's up high, you know, like if those basketball court where the chin is, um, and – they were missing those guys, but then you stop seeing. I start seeing more five wide. You start to see Danger just post up, which they didn't get him the ball as much. I don't think he got as many touches as he probably should have. Or they see Mayor get the ball. They see Car Shannon Carter get the ball, and they say, "Okay, well, you're going to bail us out because that's what you do." Shannon Carter bailed them out against the Northwestern, and you know Mayor has from time to time again have bailed them out. You can't always we Illinois. This Illinois team has been different than years past, where you have a guy that can do that. Carter and Mayer can kind of be that guy to bail them out. But when they're struggling, who's going to bail them out? And sometimes it's Coleman Hawkins. You know, is it going to be Epps? Does he come in and make big shots? Does Jane just start to do good things in the post? You know, it's been kind of those things when you don't have – I don't even know if – we don't really have a true point guard developed yet because we are a young team. I know, you know – you know, Shannon Carter is a guard, but he he seems like an off guard. He can't pull up and shoot. But we don't have that type of guy anymore. We don't have um, anybody that's going to come down and can fully bail them out all the time. Because when you look at points, Danger had zero. Zero points. He only played nine minutes. Only nine minutes. He was struggling. Um, Coleman Hawkins led all the team in scoring with for Illinois with 14 Mayor only with 11, and Mayor shot four of 11 total, three for 10, shot 10 threes. Like, that's not good. Um, and, uh, you know, he was four for 11 field goal wise, three of 10 from three. Um, Shannon Carter only had 10 points. He had none in the first, I think he had two in the first half, um, and ended up scoring his eight in the second half. Um, turned the ball over four times. He led Illinois with turnovers. Um, they, they just didn't play well. 
you know, and I think the way their schedule was set up, how quickly they have to play some of these games, which they're not going to make excuses on that. Um, now they get some time off for it to play Michigan, but this, but when, but when you get into the Big Ten tournament, you're going to be playing these close games. When you're going into the NCAA tournament, you're going to be playing close games. And so this whole, well, they're tired and they're looking this a certain way, and you know their their feelings are a certain way. That that cannot be the excuse anymore. And if you look at every single post game of this show or any other podcast, it's the same thing of who's going to be the guy that puts their foot down is the leader and put their foot down and say, I'm going to get us out of this or uh, who's going to be um, the guy that, you know, who, who who's going to be the guy when they're not getting bailed out and who's going to bail them out. You know, I, for example, when I speak to our basketball players, that's the one thing I say, like quit looking. We did the same thing. We would look to a certain player to bail them out. And I said, well, when are we going to be the guy that bails ourselves out? We're going to be the guy that does something so unselfish to get somebody else open to bail us out. And I'm not saying Illinois does it all the time, but if you actually record a game and go back and watch it, they will stand there and just watch. Do they do it every single time? No, but they do it in crucial moments where, you know, another team has forced them to use the whole 30-second shot clock. It's, you know, when they're down to another team that they shouldn't be down to. And Ohio State, you know, they may not be very good, but by God, they played tough. They played inspired. They had this high energy. They didn't bother them if they made a mistake. There were some fouls that were calling them they argued with. But they didn't dwell on it. If you actually look, then you saw guys directing. You know, I saw a player. I cannot remember off the top of my head. He literally showed one of the players, like, hey, this is where you need to be in help side defense. Because they're a young team. They, they, don't, they had nothing to lose. They had nothing to lose. And those are the most dangerous teams. The team that has nothing to lose, and they play – high energy and effort, and they're making these difficult shots, they are a very dangerous team. Illinois played uninspired, it looked like, from the outsider's perspective of watching it um, on TV. I was not there. Um, check out my buddy's podcast. Um, at no one asked his podcast. The, the co-host there was at the game. I need to go listen to their thoughts because he was at the game. But from the outside looking in, it just... Didn't look at the beginning of the game. I thought Illinois was moving around, and then it just kind of looked uninspired. They didn't want to play defense. Um, I thought Ohio State was making crazy shots as well. Which, when that happens, that's just one of those games where you go, "Okay, they're they're making shots, they're doing their thing." Um, there's nothing really I could do. But at the same time, Illinois they love to settle for those damn threes. Selling for the threes is what they do. That's their MO. They want to hit those threes to get excitement. They want to hit those threes to get some mojo going. And they really do it when they turn the ball over and they miss certain opportunities at the basket. And when they do, that's when they start going, well, we're going to get away from this and look to the threes. And when guys are taking the pain away. But in turn, on defense, they they – didn't stop guys getting to the paint. They When they would get back screen, the guy didn't guard the back screen very well. They left a couple guys open for Ohio State. Um, another thing for Ohio State, Ohio State defense, they held Illinois to 60 points. It's the best defensive outlet by the Buckeyes since January 1st when they held Northwestern to 57 points. They only allowed eight Illini assists on 22 baskets and held them 36%. Um, they went on a lot of big runs. Ohio State went on a 17-4 run. Um, which under 12 minutes to play, um, you know, just the points in the paint and stopping the guys from driving into the paint. And it just looked like Illinois looked uninspired. They, you know, they had that big emotional roller coaster for Northwestern's game. Um, you know, when Shannon Carter's not scoring well, he was three of 12 shooting over oh, oh, three at the three point line. Uh, Mayer struggled, like I said. Coleman Hawkins, he was 6 of 13. Um, Melendez didn't bring much off. He had that good, great dunk, but we started to play this great, this up and down, up and down, up and down type of game. And Illinois can play that way, but when they are allowing the other team just continue to drive into the lane and score, it, it doesn't help. Um, now, this team is not dead. 
This team is not over. They have a big time game coming up on the second. I believe that is Thursday. They play against Michigan, so they have some time to rest and, and get to that game. Then they don't get much time off. Three days after that, they have to play at Purdue. Um, that's going to be a big time game. But to play against Michigan, a team that I despise, um, it'll be hopefully a good win there for Illinois, especially because they get Michigan at home. But this is one of the things that concern us as Illinois fans is these players just settle. And what's going to hurt this team is the inconsistency of somebody, quote unquote, being the guy and quote unquote, bailing them out of things. It has been Mayor, it has been Shannon Carter Jr. Um, but you don't have Io DeSumo right now. You don't have a Trent Frazier and these guys. Other uh, and we're young still. We're relying on some freshmen to make some of these plays. We're relying on some freshmen to do some of these things. And hopefully, after losing to a lonely Ohio State team, this is one of not this is one of the worst Ohio State teams we've probably seen in a while, which makes us hurt a little more. Is do they take this and say, okay, Michigan's a rival game for the past couple of years? We got to be able to take our anger out on them because it looked like Ohio State also had nothing else to lose. Took all their anger out on Illinois. And that's where, as a fan, you're confused with this Illinois team when you beat Syracuse very early on in the year, beat them good. You have that comeback win against Texas. Um, you beat UCLA early on in the year as well. But then you lose to Northwestern early on in the year. Um, did some bad things against Alabama A&M. The Missouri game, that's going to be highlighted and starred for the rest, you know, till next year talking about that game then you go on these win streaks but then you lose to an indiana who you did some good things against then you lose at iowa when that shouldn't have happened you couldn't beat penn state this year lose to indiana again and now you lose to ohio state who is ranked right above minnesota for last place in the big 10 minnesota's one and 16 at big 10 players ohio state's four and 14 now so that's gonna be the confusing thing for this illinois team is why is this inconsistency happening? And it goes back to, you know, gain away from what they're doing. They tense up. They're going to settle for threes. Who's the guy that's going to take over consistently? Who's going to be that person? And then when that person that's trying to bail them out isn't successful, then who else is going to step up? And, and you know, I'm going to come in and take over and help get this team on track, those type of things. And that's kind of what we're missing with this Illinois team, and it's always going to come back to that. But – Illinois gets the tough loss at Ohio State, 72-60. to 60. Um, They now will play Michigan. They get a couple of days to prepare for that. Uh, Michigan is coming off an overtime win, I believe, versus Wisconsin. So now Michigan is now 17-2 and two overall, and they are 17-12 overall, 11-7 in the Big Ten, right? And they're two games back from first place right above Illinois. I saw one today before Michigan pulled off this win. The Michigan be one of the first four teams out. So if Illinois can get the win over them, hopefully we could be one of the teams to knock them out of getting to the NCAA tournament. Um, they did beat Wisconsin overtime 87-79 to after the Illinois game. So this will be a big-time tough game, and we will – be back to talk about that either a preview of it if something happens or hopefully a post game uh that'll be a big time game but thanks everybody for watching and or listening like and subscribe to the youtube channel follow um on twitter at coach underscore steve 72 and at coach steve show on twitter as well it's another twitter account that i'm trying to grow check out all the affiliates in the description below follow right on apple and itunes helps go a long way um Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you guys again for watching and or listening. This is Coach Steve, and we will see you guys next time.